It's now time to see what Graham is up to at the Caravan, Camping and Touring Holiday Show. Welcome to the RNA Showgrounds in Brisbane, where the Queensland the Caravan Camping and Touring Holiday Show has rolled into town for another year. Here at Australia's largest caravan exhibition, you'll find that there's something for everyone, from the budget camper right through to the deluxe motorhome devotee. So come with me and let's check out what's new in caravan and camping. <laughs> Hi, and we're with Owen here with the Bolwell Edge uh, Caravan, which has some interesting and new features. So, Owen, can you uh, tell us a little about, a bit about those? Well, the Bolwell Edge is a tough luxury tourer. It's tough because it's designed for corrugated dirt roads. It's designed to go around Australia, and to go anywhere of interest around Australia, you really need to be able to go off the, off the highway, down to national parks, down to the riverbank, things like that. It's luxury because we've got so many features inside, um, that I'll show you in a second, um, that it, it, it's really designed for the luxury market. And you've got a pop top, so you, uh, as far as storage goes, you can store it in a normal garage. You've got uh, external galley, it's here to cook outside, and uh, the benefit of that is you're not going to have your cooking smells inside. You've also got an inside cooker if it's raining, but this is a great option. And you've got water here, that's the water storage tank you've got in the caravan, isn't it's it? All, it's all plumbed to the internal water that's fantastic. and the hot water. Yeah, that's really great. Can we have a look at some of the features inside? Absolutely, Good. let's go. Right. Well, and we've had a look at that uh, fantastic feature outside the external galley, but we've got this wonderful compact cooker, sink, and pop-up electrical uh, unit in here also. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, Graham, we've designed this so that it's, it's a pretty much a self-contained unit inside as well as outside. Uh, we've got the uh, stainless steel appliances, the sink, the stainless steel two-burner cooker. We've also got a funky little device that is the pop-up 240-volt electrical outlet. So when you're in a caravan park, you pop that up, you can plug in your microwave, your hairdryer, whatever you want. Thanks very much for the tour, Owen. I appreciate it. Now, Roger, tell me, what does four-wheel drives mean for caravanners today? A great many things, mate, and they're all good. Absolutely fantastic. First of all, they're big and they're heavy. So when you're towing something big and heavy, they're not pushed around by it. So they're comfortable, they're safe, easy to drive, and more relaxed towing than you'd get with, say, a car towing the same van. Four-wheel drive's always a lot better to have. So tell me, Roger, what have uh, some of the changes been with uh, four-wheel drive? Well, Graham, the biggest difference that concerns caravanners is the dual cab utes. The old days, the utes were rough, they were tough, they were awful to ride in, awful to drive, and they couldn't tow much. Nowadays, most of them will tow three tonnes safely, and the inside of them is just like a passenger car, and they're much more comfortable. So they're a great proposition, and they're usually four-cylinder diesels, and they're pretty economical, and a great thing to have. So, Roger, how would we turn a working ute into a caravan towing four-wheel drive? Graham, that's easy. Just take it straight to a four-wheel drive accessory store, and there's, there's nothing that you can't get. Everything from canopies, roof racks, roller draw systems, fuel tanks, water tanks, suspension, bull bars of course, driving lights, absolutely everything can be got to turn that ute into something that's going to be fantastic. And that's it from Roger and I at the Queensland Caravan Camping and Touring Holiday Show. So, we'll see you next time. Time to check in with Graham again at the Caravan Camping Holiday and Touring Show. How are you going, Graham? Very good. Now, so we're here today with Randall and the Ozpig. Now, Randall, just tell us a bit about what is the Ozpig. I can do that, Graham. The Ozpig is a barbecue, it's a heater, it's a cooker. As you can see here at the moment, it's doing a few things all at the same time. It comes with a spark arrestor, a three-piece chimney, comes with two barbecue plates, the body. On the top here, I've got a little toaster. That's an accessory that comes with the Ozpig. I use that to cover the firebox. As you can see, we can use it as an open fire. We can use it as an enclosed fire. This morning on the Ozpig here, I cooked our breakfast on the barbecue plate. Now that plate does rotate around over the top there. It is removable with the lifting tool. So it'll rotate around over the top here and do the barbecuing. Once the barbecue is done, back off to the side. I percolated the coffee this morning on top of the toaster. That got the, the coffee going for me. Once it's done, out here, and that plate is extremely hot sitting on that side. Over on the other side here, as you can see, we're doing our dinner for tonight. So my wife put this lovely recipe together, it's apricot chicken. We started it off up here this morning and we started cooking this just after breakfast this morning. 
As you can see in there. Oh, it's actually yeah. lovely slow <laughs> lovely. cooking apricot chicken. Yes. Yeah, it's there's nothing pretend about that. That's Smells going to wonderful. cook on here for around about oh probably be seven or eight hours that'll slow cook on there for us today. What sort of fuel do you use this? Just general bush wood? Uh, I'm using timber, good hard wood. What I've got in the bucket over here, this is uh, the type of timber that I'm using. It's a bit of good iron bark, cut and split. Iron bark. Yeah, iron bark. So when you're out camping, caravan, you can use bush wood. You can use whatever. Yeah, wood, yeah, yeah. If you go to an area where you're not allowed to use timber, you can revert to heat beads. Okay, so utensils. You've got a lot of little... Uh, is that a wok or a pan wok? That's a wok. A wok. That one there, I use that for doing our stir fries. Mm -hmm. I use it for chalet frying and fish and chips. Excellent. And I also use it to turn our little barbecue plate there into a miniature oven. So oh. I can cook pizzas. That's amazing. Good, good idea. Great little idea That's for the pizzas. That's a good idea. Now is that, that a... The wok is a great little utensil. Is that, car, is that a cast fry pan or is it? The cast iron fry pan, That's we don't have those available. It's just no, something it's that just you can use. Okay. Cast iron fry pan. Also, you can see your jaffa line. Chaffles. Chaffles are great. <laughs> good for the leftovers. That is excellent, Randall. I love it. And thanks very much. Have a good show. Thank you, And uh, we'll see you next time. What is the T-Van? Well, Graham, the T-Van's a go-anywhere caravan. This will go where your conventional caravan won't. So wherever a four-wheel drive owner wants to go, they take their T-Van with them. Essentially, you, it's got a, a full-size double bed and all the advantages of a small caravan. So you're underneath a hard roof and behind hard walls so if the weather cuts up rough you, you're covered but when you get to your campsite you've got a full two meter by 1700 tent which deploys from this area and onto the fold out deck so you immediately increase your living space from a double bed area to a 4.8 meter long campsite excellent and amazing. then from there you can go on to add annexes and shower and toilet uh, en suites and everything So the T-van will go where a caravan won't go, off uh, road, and you're not going to get stuck. Well, absolutely, and not just because it's a compact van, it's because it's the way it's built. It's got a full military off-road suspension, so fully independent suspension, but the trick to it is that the wheel on the right-hand side pivots off the left-hand side of the chassis and vice versa. It makes a phenomenal system for corrugations mm -hmm. and rough roads. So Brett, when the tent is fully deployed, to actually fold it up, zip it up and away up into there, compact, fold up your back and drive off on your way, what sort of time period would that take? Well, if there's two of you, you'll do that in under three minutes. Three minutes? Yeah, if you're there doing it on your own, it's just as easy, but it'll take you around four to four and a half minutes That's on amazing. your own. That's yeah. And it doesn't matter whether it's been a wet night and the tent's soaking wet, you can pack it away without any concerns about it getting anywhere near your bed or even into this area here, so you just get on your way in the morning. Okay, Brett, now I'd love to see this tent deploy here, so uh, is there any chance that we can, can we can see that? Sure, Graham, we'll just step over here. We've got one we've already got set up. Excellent, it's done. So this is your uh, external galley, uh, Brett? Yeah, it's a stainless steel cooker, self-supporting, all just telescopes away, so cutlery, um, pressurised water to your sink, twin burners, wind, wind shield, Simple, effective. Folds up or slides into the... Absolutely. Come and show us this tent, Brett. Oh, this is very spacious here, Brett. I mean, I'm uh, six foot two, 188, and this must be actually three metres tall. What's, what's the, the measurement? Yeah, well, your floor area is two metres long by 1,700 wide, so if you've got additional people camping with you, they can lay their swags here or we have a family room option, which is the same size as what we're looking at here, out to this side. Well, Brett, thanks very much for the tour of the T-Van. Excellent, and uh, we'll see you again. Now, when you're at your caravan site and you have a problem with getting fresh water, there is now a facility to be able to access the water table. Now, with Paul here, who has a sand spear, can you explain to us, uh, Paul, how this works? Yeah, well, this is the first of the portable sand spears. Now, they're designed for beach areas mainly. They will work in dry creek beds and everything, providing there's no dirt or mud. They're pure sand spears only. Now, ideally, at your campsite, on the beach, this is, you dig a hole down until you see the fresh water just starting to trickle into the hole. This is the base of the spear. Now, when you're actually installing the spear, water comes out of this tube here that you're, that you're pumping, and that's what makes the spear go down. Once you get the spear down, well, then you connect the 
they've pumped to a different tube and it sucks through this sand screen. Now that's very fine filter. Now water goes through there, sand does not. Now once you find the water in the bottom of the hull, when you see that you get a bucket of salt water, it doesn't have to be fresh, don't waste your own water. With the pump that comes with it, you actually pump water down this one here and you dig the sphere down. Now you can put it right down out of sight and once it's there, then you connect your pump up to this tube here, turn your pump back on again and you suck all the fresh water you require. Okay, so Paul, the sand spinner goes in to the ground. We then turn on the tap. Now that, the pump goes on, sucks up the water from the, the water table. We then turn off and the pump stops. Yes, so the pump's using no power whatsoever at the moment. Uh -huh. It's only using power when you turn that tap on. Thanks very much, Paul, and uh, good luck with the sand spinner. And uh, we'll see you next time. Time to check in with Graham again at the Caravan Camping Holiday and Touring Show. We'll heat them in the hot pan and they can go into the oven bag as well. Now we're not going to cook the broccoli in here for the whole day, are we? Good day, Barry, and good day, Mara. Now, um, I believe that you actually don't need electricity for this pot, so just tell us about the Dream Pot. Graham, the Dream Pot has a lovely name because many, many moons ago when our children were young, Mara and I, we've always loved camping. And one of, one of the hassles that we used to have uh, on our annual camping trips was what we used to take, all our cooking, all the pots and pans, and practically the kitchen sink. In those days too, uh, my wife and I, we've been involved in our business since 1960 odd. And on one of our overseas trips, we did buy this little insulated pot. It, it was just a pot that kept things hot or cold. And, um, and, and we brought it back home to Rockhampton. And over the, and over the, uh, uh, what the next few years, we loved it so much, I used to call it my little dream pot. <laughs> it was just only, only, only a fraction of, of what you see now, the way the name has evolved. So what but I've had to do is to learn and experiment mm -hmm. on now, how can we use this product that uses no power mm -hmm. in our camping and travelling trips? So right from day one, from scratch, I started experimenting. So we've done all this experimenting over the years now to come up with cooking, breakfast, lunches, dinners, morning and afternoon teas, even the supper at night when you're playing cards, and it uses no power. So you've invented it, designed it in Australia, and you're we've developed your baby. This, we've yeah, developed this product. It is Excellent. our baby, Graham. And we saw the niche. We saw there was a big need in the marketplace uh, for people travelling, camping, fishing and boating because cooking really was an absolute chore. But with the, uh, the way that we've developed the Dream Pot now, it is such a wonderful, really wonderful appliance that when we are travelling and people are cooking while they're travelling, after a long day on the road, there's nothing to cook. Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely magnificent where you can use it, what it'll save you. Now, when we started many years ago, we used to cook, uh, we used to um, really push, one of the virtues was it was very energy efficient. Mm -hmm. In those days, it didn't mean much, mm -hmm. but today, with our changing environment, uh, uh, with everything going green, the Dream Pot is truly one of the best cooking machines. And okay, thanks very much, Barry. Thanks very much, Merrin. And you've got a wonderful product here with the uh, the Dream Pot, and uh, we will see you again. <laughs>